So this is the final lecture for the course, um, or the final topic we'll be talking about, which is the conservation of momentum. Now the conservation of momentum comes from Newton's second law. We've talked about this some in the class. F is equal to ma. We've talked about the corresponding partners to this uh, in our course. We talked a lot about conservation of energy, talked a lot about conservation of mass, and now we're talking about conservation of momentum. But this is a familiar formula. The sum of the forces is equal to mass times acceleration. Now we can rewrite acceleration as uh, the change in velocity with time and if we include the mass inside of our derivative here we would have now the conservation of momentum. Momentum is mass times the velocity. So this uh, represents dmv dt is the rate of change of momentum. We are going to be considering the linear momentum or the momentum of the body. So we're going to be looking at the momentum of this body in either the x or the y directions as we do our analysis. Now what's important before we do analysis, one of our analyses using the conservation of momentum is selecting a control volume and we already know how to do that but when we have these open systems like this typically what we want to do is have the control surfaces so the volume is all the surfaces all four of these surfaces the control surface is just this one here we'd like the control surface to be normal to the flow that's coming in or out typically that's what we'd like to do just because it's much easier to do and you know we'll be dealing uh, only with really fixed um, control volumes here. We've done some deforming control volumes in the first half of the class. Here we're just trying to illustrate how to use this relationship. So we'll be dealing with fixed uh, control volumes. Now there's two parts to this. There's the of our equation. There's the left hand side of Newton's second law here and there's the right hand side. Now the left hand side we're talking about the sum of the forces. So the sum of the forces, what we're going to consider are body and surface forces. Body forces are things that act throughout the whole body, which is basically gravity, okay, for our, what we're going to be considering. We also have uh, surface forces. So surface forces are going to be basically pressures. We can also have uh, some other types of forces acting on the viscous forces, things like that, but we're going to be mainly for body forces, we're going to be thinking about gravity. For surface forces, we're going to be considering pressure. You can have several different other forces and things, but like I mentioned here previously, we're going to be considering gravity forces and we're going to be considering pressure forces, okay? Now in our, our analysis, what this chapter is for is to anal analyze systems where the uh, pressure, or we're trying to, this is basically a design tool, let me just say that. This is a design tool where we're trying to calculate how much force, let's say, how big do these bolts need to be in order to hold this flow through this pipe in place we have a certain weight associated with all of this water or whatever fluid this is and with the a certain weight associated with the pipe and we also have a lot of momentum that this flow brings through here coming through this pipe so what size force do we need now I think I need to mention here too is in our analysis of these systems we're going to be dealing with gauge pressures all the time Okay, the reason being because atmospheric pressures will just end up canceling out and actually using gauge pressure helps simplify our analysis some, okay? So we're assuming atmospheric pressure acts on all parts of our system, therefore we're only going to be considering gauge pressures in our analyses. Another thing I'd like to mention is the Reynolds transport theorem. And the Reynolds transport theorem is basically a theorem 
that for our purposes is something that expresses the conservation of mass, the conservation of momentum, and the conservation of energy in one compact equation. So here's the equation, that the general conservation of mass equation here that they've shown uh, here. So here's our Reynolds transport theorem, okay? This is the general Reynolds transport. looks terrible, okay, but it's not uh, a terrible equation. It's a great uh, tool that we're both the conservation of mass, energy, and momentum all follow this form. So here for the conservation of mass they have B and B is just a general variable here that represents can represent mass, energy, or momentum. Whatever we substitute as big B, so here if we do want to do conservation of mass, big B is li M, little b is whatever B is divided by M. Okay, it's per, whatever B is per unit mass. So if we put plug in big for big B M, little B would be big B per divided by M. So this would be one. B would be one. Now we've just written the conservation of mass. So I'm missing an equal sign here too. I think so. I don't know uh, what happened. All right. So. Um, what this equation is saying basically though is anything that is coming into our system accumulating in our control volume we're summing that up plus anything that's passing through our control surfaces a lot of times this is a steady type equation so this would go to zero and for a steady flow equation we'd have the change in mass in our control volume would be whatever's coming in minus whatever's coming out which is what this is v dot n right if v is parallel to what's coming out that's positive if it's n is going in the opposite direction of v that means the flow is coming in it's negative okay so that's what that equation is so likewise we can substitute now mv for our momentum so this is dmv little b would be just v and we could plug that into here and obtain our conservation of momentum so uh, let's go to the conservation of momentum equation, which is here. So we, you guys see that we could just plug in using our Reynolds transport theorem. Now we have our general conservation of momentum equation. Let's get that out of here. So here, this is what you guys need to know. Now remember, this is our accumulation term, or we're summing all that, any type of momentum that comes in the system. But again, if it's steady, this would go to zero. So a lot of times what we're interested in is just this term right here. The sum of the forces, which is remember our body and our surface forces, plus our um, anything that's any momentum that's crossing our control surface. All right. Now keep in mind in our analysis This is a vector, okay? All of these are, this is going to result in being a vector. Uh, so, knowing that when we did conservation of energy and we did conservation of mass, none of that was a vector. Now, this is a vector, and we have to take into account the x and the y direction of our uh, systems when we're analyzing the forces. So if it's steady, so you guys will see a beta term here. That's just a correction factor that's used. We'll try not to use those, okay, to confuse you guys. Just know that momentum is the mass times the velocity, or here it's the mass flow rate times the velocity. So there's so, several special cases that we could look at uh, where the analysis, though, would just be the same thing. So we're interested in, so here's our control surfaces. We're interested in what's coming in, what's coming out, and if we wanted the forces, remember we have to sum the forces, we would have to take the component of this, right? So that when we're considering both the x and the y directions, we'd have to be careful in our analysis. And finally, you know, here's a special case where we have no forces, which would apply to something like in space. We may work an example like that, let's see, uh, for our problem solving session. But uh, in that case, we can simply 
right, and especially if it's steady, that the mass momentum in and momentum out are equal to each other. And again, we may do that here uh, as an example. So uh, thank you guys very much. I enjoyed uh, working with you throughout the semester. We will do one more lecture uh, solving problems for using the conservation of momentum.